Make or fake an HRI for IBL in Bryce for Bryce. Part 3 Merging the rendered panoramas to an HRI. Part 1 discussed how to set up the lights in a scene, and Part 2 showed how to render the scene with different light settings. Now we have to assemble the renders to an HRI. To merge the exported renders to an HRI, an additional program is needed. The video why you should consider exporting your renders as HRI mentions several free programs for the Mac and PC. We will use Picture now to assemble the HRI and HRI Shop to transform the spherical projection to an angular map. HRI Shop can also assemble the individual renders to an HRI, but Picture now is more flexible and gives better results. Bryce can use light probes in the spherical projection as well and a transformation is not mandatory. However, it appears that Bryce prefers the angular map. The HRI light probes in the spherical projection can also be used in Carrara and DAS Studio, though a bit tricky in DAS Studio, and several other 3D programs. If you prefer building and rendering your scenes in another 3D application, you can still use Bryce to create light probes for them. I rendered this scene as cube faces to create a larger probe. After assembling, I found this result with the violet floor. It turned out that one render was exported as 24-bit TIFF instead of 48-bit. I had to render that one again. If you get funny results, check the file sizes of the exported renders to find the one exported wrong. As was mentioned in part 2, the TIFF file type remains the same, but the resolution falls back from 48 to 24 bit and this has to be checked each time a render is exported. This is picture now 3.2. Once started, click on File, then Generate HRI, and the Generate HRI dialog opens. Click on Add, and in the Open dialog, select all files that will make up the HRI, holding down the Control key. The loaded pictures are listed with their names. For a perch and time, there are one, for bias, there are zeros. Now modify the aperture column so that the f-stops match. This will be 4 and this will be 16. For time, leave at 1, 1 second, never mind, and there was no bias, so keep it at 0. There are some options that can be selected. Keep exposure correction enabled. There is no need to enable automatic image alignment since the Bryce camera is on a quite stable tripod. Coast removal is neither necessary. There are no moving objects like people or cars in the image. You can try color balancing. I balance colors with an external program if necessary. Use standard weighting and the camera curve be computed. This usually gives the best results. For photographic pictures I usually have it that way then save the curve to assure that all HRIs for a panorama look the same. Here we have only one position. However, if you render the six faces of a cube to create a really large light probe you would assemble the face with the highest contrast first using compute, then save the curve and use it for the remaining five cube faces. Click on OK and the HRI is assembled. On the bottom we have the statistics. The EV range of eight exposure values was found in the list of the loaded pictures. Picture now calculated the true EV span of almost 23 and the maximum radiance at almost 24. The dynamic range is quite high at about 6.6 .6 
million to one. Just from looking at the statistics, we can tell that this HRI is a success. The HRI is shown linearly tone mapped. That means that the whole range is squeezed into the limited range of the graphics card and hence the monitor. You can now save the HRI. File, Save As, select Radeon's RGBE, give it a name and there you are. This is all PictureNaut can do for us. This HRI can be tested in Bryce. We will find that it is a bit low in light. For the backdrop we need an intensity of 30 and the HRI effect set at maximum and uh, we still do not have enough light on this sphere. Though we can of course apply to the light source and then we have ample light on this sphere. We end up at about 775 if we render this this looks more or less about right. The disadvantage of using the apply to light source multiplier is that the background brightness is coupled to the light generated. This is fine if the HRI is not used as backdrop, but if it is used as a backdrop, the range of the intensity value is limited because it is coupled with the HRI effect as was the case in Bryce 6. We would rather prefer to have intensity, the background brightness, and HRI effect, light generated, independent. To be able to do this, we need more power for the HRI. This is where HRI shop comes in. I have loaded the HRI already. We can measure the light. Down here you can see the light intensity. So we think it is quite good at 6 when all the rest is at 0 0.1 but we know that it does not suffice. Now there is an option to multiply all pixel values with a constant independent for red, green and blue. This would be image, pixels, scale. All pixels in the image are multiplied by the value entered. What values do we enter now for red, green and blue? A short test in Bryce showed that we had to set intensity to 30 for a sensible bright backdrop and apply to light source to get some light from the HRI. In fact, HRI effect at 75 gave good light. How intensity as a multiplier for HRI effect works is described in the PDF document brightness and follow. This document can be found on my website under Bryce Documents, Mine PDF, Light, Brightness and Falloff and here for all the lights it is explained how they behave and also for IBL And thanks to this document, we can find that we should multiply the pixel values by 4 and then we can reduce intensity to a fourth to 7.5. If apply to light source is still enabled, HRI effect stays at 75. Now if we disabled apply to light source, there will be no light booster and we'll have to double the HRI effect from 75 to 150. To sum it up, multiplying the pixel values by 4, adding two full f-stops, results in a nicely balanced HRI for IBL. The backdrop gets good light at intensity 7.5 and there is ample light at the HRI effect of 150. So that's the theory. Now enter 4 for red, green and blue and hit OK. 
the HRI displayed in HRI shop gets brighter, hit the minus key twice to step down two f-stops and it looks the same as before, but this is only the display. Now we load this HRI LLX4, that's four times bright. We can divide 30 by 4 which gives us 7.5 and the backdrop looks the same. We have to reapply to light source then 75 is still good enough for the HR effect as we can see. If we remove apply to light source what we actually want we have to double the HR effect to get the same light. That should give us more or less the same render. So we proved our theory. Multiplying all the pixel values by a constant is not mandatory but in the example we are using we get a better range for intensity and HRI effect. We could multiply the pixel values only by 2. Intensity would have to be set to 15 and if applied to light source were engaged HRI effect would still be good at 150. However, if intensity is not used as a light multiplier, HRI effect would have to be moved up to 500. That would still be good, but there were only one exposure value we could increase, and this is a bit of a limit. Therefore, multiplying the pixels by 4 is a good compromise. To transform the spherical projected HRI to an angular map, we use HRI shop again. Click on Image, Panorama, Panoramic Transformations. This opens the Panoramic Transform dialog. The source image is the one loaded and the format is spherical. So we have to change this. It is called Latitude Longitude in HRI shop. The size is filled in automatically. As destination image we want a new image and the format angular map. Light probe angular map. Using super sample n times n equal 3 prevents fine lines to get interrupted though this function makes the transformation take more time. This is usually worth the while but there are also images that can do without it. Bilinear interpolation should also be enabled. It gives better results if a picture is scaled and we know it from many graphics program. Hit the button and there you are. To save the final image we click on File, Save As, Radiance Format and give it a name and save the picture like that. Now we finally have our light probe and I load it. It is angular map times 4 and now we can test its light properties in Bryce. Additionally to the sundial setup shown before I also use some scenes that show light, backdrop and ambient light as well. Here we have Bryce gray spheres and mirror balls. The backdrop is not toe mapped, but we can do that. It doesn't change the light on the objects, it only changes the light in the backdrop. The effect of the prominent light sources and the ambient light is shown on the gray spheres. Looking at this side, Turning to the back side, turning 90 degrees again, and we see this is probably a little bit bright, so we would change the HI effect to 120. Since we do not have apply to light source, it is decoupled, and the HI effect only changes the light on the object but not on the background and this is exactly what we want. 
so this seems to look better now let's looking up on the ceiling and finally looking down on the bottom and we can see where the light comes from this example also shows again the light a light probe gives us I load my AMX4 render in scene already and I have to move up the HRI effect I don't mind the backdrop and this shows us the color of the light generated and the more shadows we get the more ambient light we also have though we do have prominent light source as we can see on this face of the cube and the last example is this one I get again my light source never mind how the backdrop looks we can move it up a bit we do not need more than 16 let's get to about 7 and do a toe mapping and we can have a look at our staircase how it is lit and now I rotate the HRI by 90 degrees and we can see also how the light changes on the staircase and the objects here so this gives us an idea about the light conditions this HRI provides I hope this gets you going to experiment creating a light probe from your renders. You need to think about what the scene you want to use and how the lights have to be changed. You have to render several times your scene under different light conditions and save them as 48-bit TIFFs, assemble them to an HRI and then you can use it as a light probe. This concludes the three-part video about making or faking an HRI for IBL in Bryce. For Bryce.